Hey, welcome back to Clean Cut, where we can talk about the truth about just about anything, as long as we use logic and common sense. This season, we'll be looking at more prayers of the faith, and this time, the prayer for the seven gifts of the Holy Spirit. Over the last couple of episodes, we've gone over some songs of prayer to the Holy Spirit, and both songs mention the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Those gifts, remember, being listed in Isaiah 11, 2-3, wisdom, understanding, counsel, fortitude, knowledge, godliness, and fear of the Lord. Read, fear of offending the Lord. Well, as it turns out, there's a separate prayer all about these gifts, so let's take a closer look at it today. O Lord Jesus Christ, who, before ascending into heaven, didst promise to send the Holy Ghost to finish thy work in the souls of thy apostles and disciples. The Gospels refer to this promise in both Luke 24.49 and John 14.16. Deign to grant the same Holy Spirit to me, that he may perfect in my soul the work of thy grace and thy love. When we increase in grace and love, this is because the Holy Spirit has given us those graces, putting them into our souls. Jesus sends the Holy Spirit to do this work. Grant me the spirit of wisdom, that I may despise the perishable things of this world, and aspire only after the things that are eternal. There are many good descriptions of wisdom in the Bible, especially in the Book of Wisdom, of course. However, the one that sticks with me is from 1 Kings 3, 9, where Solomon requests an understanding mind with which to judge the people and discern good from evil. God refers to this as wisdom in the following verses and congratulates Solomon on choosing wisdom even over riches, success, and a long life. In the same way, the wisdom of God is more useful to us than those things because if we can discern good from evil, we'll be more able to avoid sin and to recognize when we need to repent, increasing our ability to pursue eternal life. The spirit of understanding to enlighten my mind with the light of thy divine truth. Understanding truths about God and heaven makes us better able to deal with whatever stands in the way of our relationship with God. The spirit of counsel, that I may ever choose the surest way of pleasing God and gaining heaven. Counsel doesn't necessarily refer to our own ability to give advice to others. It does, however, refer to our ability to receive advice quickly and without hesitation from the Holy Spirit. This makes it much faster and easier to do what needs to be done, since the Holy Spirit perfectly knows it and can help to guide us. The spirit of fortitude, that I may bear my cross with thee, and that I may overcome with courage all the obstacles that oppose my salvation. As we've discussed before, fortitude is like courage, an ability to endure hardships with the strength to continue pursuing our real end goal of heaven, rather than getting distracted by them or throwing fits over how offended we are. The spirit of knowledge, that I may know God and know myself, and grow perfect in the science of the saints. Learning about God can help us to understand what we need to do, to foster a relationship with Him. Learning about ourselves can help us to learn our own weaknesses and sinful tendencies so that we can try to overcome them. All of this is useful knowledge. The spirit of piety, that I may find the service of God sweet and amiable. The book of Isaiah uses the term godliness, but it's basically the same thing, an ability to serve God diligently in a religious devotion. If we can keep this up, the Holy Spirit may also bless us with the ability to enjoy serving God as well. The spirit of fear, that I may be filled with a loving reverence towards God, and may dread in any way to displease Him. These are the two things I was talking about a couple of episodes ago with regard to the term fear of the Lord, both a strong respect for God and a type of concern that we might offend God through our actions, a recognition of the negative consequences of sin rather than a paralyzing terror. Mark me, dear Lord, with the sign of thy true disciples, and animate me in all things with thy spirit. Amen. Finally, we ask God to make true disciples of us and give us the energy to act as the Holy Spirit wants us to. So this prayer, a prayer to Jesus rather than to the Holy Spirit directly, is mainly a series of requests for each individual gift of the Holy Spirit and of summaries of what those gifts are. Next time, the prayer called Prayer to the Holy Spirit. That's all for now, so keep asking questions, and thanks for watching.